Welcome to Wise Beyond Bitcoin, your home for the crypto neo news, education, and opportunities. My name is Ryan. My name is Lucas. And thank you for that love and support. We appreciate every time you do the thumbs up and subscribe button. It helps the algorithms and the algorithms are for, if you come here for blockchain education and crypto consulting, that's our thing. What's not our thing is financial advice, commercial advice, legal advice, medical advice, real advice. No, we just share our research perspectives and understanding from years messing around and experimenting this new emerging technology and ecosystem with a little bit of economic market outlooks and how it's all related and connected. We've got playlists, we've got, we got tutorials too. So we don't just talk about the most relevant innovative protocols out there in blockchain, but we will actually experiment with Web 3.0 wallets and teach you, show you how to participate and get involved. But at the moment, this emerging market, this seedling is definitely influenced and is, uh, well, suffering from the effects of what's happening in the ocean, the, the traditional markets. And so let's uh, talk a little bit about what is going on in crypto and traditional markets. Let's do it. Well, the, the story, the big story of the moment is, is centering, centering around Celsius and stake ETH. And kind of, um, uh, we're seeing a replay of a, a familiar theme that we've been talking about, uh, you know, really since Luna Terra. But it's it's kind of the reflexive price dynamics that come about when um, when there's a big correction in asset prices and liquidity uh, starts to become an issue, and then you have asset asset prices falling. Right, lack there's a lack of demand to to get rid of these things. There's a rush to the exits. And, and when liquidity dries up, prices fall. That's kind of the, that's the theme, right? And so, yeah, it's, we're seeing another, another play out of this story. This time, the entity is Celsius, which was a centralized uh, crypto investment vehicle where you actually gave, you know, you, you transferred custody of your assets to, this, to Celsius, gave up control, and then they gave they invested your 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 assets and then gave you a yield, and so very similar to uh, to others that we've heard about, but in this case, you know, big high yields kind of like Anchor. I think there some of them had eighteen percent, you know. Uh, so we're looking at a similar similar kind of story of you know unsustainable unsustainable yields and then liquidity coming in to kind of uh, uh, you know upset the apple cart and. To, be the it's like the prick for the bubble right and and so celsius is having to they're rehiring lawyers to look at restructuring they've suspended withdrawals so if you had any any eth or staked eth on celsius or any other uh asset you know they, they are suspending their withdrawals so you have to wait to access your money and obviously the idea there is they're trying to preserve their 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 collateral, right, and and to not have to pay out their liabilities because there's this mismatch between the value of their liabilities and the value of their collateral, and their collateral has taken a big haircut along with everybody else's collateral, and so there that's the issue, right? I, you know, just a quick aside, in the history of money and finance, we we really like to get into that the economics and and where these uh, new emerging markets come from, bank runs and um, banking holidays having to stop people from rushing to the exits. This is something that governments, that institutions, that they've had to create these barriers in order to stay solvent for a long time. There is, there is no magical solution when we have these financial instruments or these intermediaries offer a rate of return, lock up some collateral, you know, it, what happens when everyone comes rushing for the exits at the same time and the asset values for the collateral start plummeting because of conditions we'll get into later. So it's not that, oh my gosh, how, you know, how does this happen? This is part of the unwinding effects, and we'll get into it, of the markets at large when the interest rates go up and the credit is crunched and people are rushing for the exits. It's it's not necessarily a failure of Celsius any more than it, it did what it could do in the market. And when the musical chairs, when the music stops and everyone's looking for a chair, um, this, this is 
basically the risk, not your keys, not your wallet. When you go for these interest rates and you're, and you're part of this um, financial model and you take those risks, I would say that this is part of the known risks that happen when you have these huge recession, depression, market black swans. You can't really say, oh my gosh, Machinsky, Celsius, you guys, what you did is, is attract, they're, they're just one of the many ships that are rising and, and falling with the markets at large, I would say. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And another thing that should be mentioned is that well, I'll hold off on that. Let's talk a little bit more about what's going on with Staked ETH. Why is it coming under pressure? What is Staked ETH? Uh, three arrows capital. We'll get into three arrows too after that. Yep. So first off, to understand what's going on with, with uh, what's causing Celsius so much pain, we should kind of explain what Staked Ether is. So this asset, this token, STETH, has, it's pegged. It, it's, in the normal times, it's pegged one-to-one -to, -one to ETH. And what it is, is it's a, it's a illiquid uh, yield-bearing derivative of ETH, essentially. So when ETH is moving to 2.0, it's moving from a proof-of-work to a proof-of-stake um, mechanism. But it hasn't happened yet. And when ETH 2.0 launches, uh, the, all of the the staked ETH that's been staked on this beacon chain, this will become withdrawable. You'll be able to withdraw your, this in, in ETH and then plus whatever uh, yield has, has accrued over this time period. Right. The issue is, is that if you need to access this liquidity, this collateral in the, in the short term, you can't because all, all of this, all, the withdrawal of the ETH is gonna have to wait for the transition to ETH 2.0. So there's a bit of an, another liquidity element to this is, you know, all of this collateral that, that's, that's sitting there is uh, kind of held hostage until this, trans, until this transition happens. So that's, that's one element to this. Now, so the question is, is well, why, why is the peg, you know, if, if this, if this cl collateral is kind of uh, committed to, to ETH, why would the peg break? And that's where these liquidity uh, issues come in. So one of the things to think about, or one of the big reasons is, is that people, uh, like for example, on Curve, there's been a, 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 with people are cashing, rushing out to cash out their ETH from, from the Curve pool. So they're pulling their ETH from Curve and they're either hodling it on, a, on, a, on their personal wallets or they're maybe taking it to an exchange to sell. Right. So there's or maybe a, there's a or maybe there's a margin call and maybe this isn't small people acting. Maybe right. this is larger whales and institutions that are that are forcing this and causing this to happen in, in the short run. They're probably this and that. Right. There's a lot of things, you know, happening. So but the result of all this activity is that there is less ETH available. There's less liquidity available in ETH in order for people to cash out of their staked ETH positions. Right. So. So the, 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 the asset that they want to get into is, is in short supply. And so the, so the result of that is there'll be a, a, a haircut on stake beef. People who really want to get out of that position are going to take less, right? They can't get the, the pegged one-to-one -one price. They're going to go and take a little less. Which pushes so, it down. And that pushes the, that breaks the peg. Essentially what that does is it puts a discount on, on stake beef and breaks the peg. And so far, the, um, the staked ETH has down 6% to, to its, to ETH in, in ether terms. In ETH this terms. Is, so this is just a temporary, it, it's not some crisis in the ETH, staked ETH um, backing. This is a temporary phenomenon in people rushing to the exits and saying, yes. I'm willing, I'm willing to cash out um, staked ETH at this price below peg right now because right. I need the money right now. And we're going to get into, we have uh, later in this article, another article, but we're, we're going to get into where some of the major volume, where, where some of the large action is that's causing this and pushing right. this down. But again, what we're going to say here, every time you see something like this, look for the opportunities. We're, we're about education and opportunities. Right now, if you're long in Ethereum, this is an opportunity of a lifetime because the staked ETH and the underlying ETH, the backing is still one-to-one. -one. So for those people that are yes. just 
hodling ETH and just waiting for a, another year or a few months or a year or two for that ETH to unlock. And it's because it's staked, it's, it's interest or it's accruing. Yes. Time. So That's right. uh, for those people right now, they can purchase ETH at a discount. You literally can come in right now and purchase ETH by buying. So at some point, we will see this happening. Maybe by the time this video comes out, it's already been done. But at some point, right. you know, you're going to see um, that being taken advantage of. But at the moment, we're looking at Celsius. We go back to these other um, intermediaries that were using staked ETH or were using this as an asset. Well, when that staked ETH value goes down, their collateral, their, their goes collateral- down value goes down yes. and they're forced to do other things. So we're seeing this and we've been talking about this for a while. We've, what are some of the main things we've been talking about? Most of blockchain and crypto is large whale institutional banking yes. money period. Um, and I forgot what else I was saying. We talked about something else, but um, let's uh, Liquidity, the oh. importance of liquidity, right? And in, in, in determining asset values it's there's um you know the demand in this in the economy when it, when it goes when it's flowing in you know all boats are rising but when it right. when that liquidity flows out all oh, that's boats right. start to fall you're right that's what we're talking about the liquidity and the leveraging yeah. we speak about just like in traditional markets where you have derivatives and and when the housing market or the bubble pops then all all those um leveraged positions collapse too well in blockchain yep. and crypto throughout DeFi, there's been people taking collateral and, and leveraging it. And we're seeing a lot of liquidations as asset prices fall, as interest rates go up. We've been talking about this. We'll continue to talk about it. So it's not That's some right. big sky is falling shock. It's just understanding the mechanics of the market. So that we could expect to see more, um, definitely some more unwinding at large, uh, both in crypto right and now macro fundamentals but but right now so uh, so they're pushing the price of state ETH down who's doing this and what's going on well a lot of it is obviously what's happening is that people are selling their state ETH positions right trying to trying to liquidate that and get into uh probably cash i would imagine and one of the and so there's lots of lots of news right now about celsius and they're liquidating their positions but according to this article Three Arrows Capital is the largest on-chain seller of staked ETH. Uh, there's a chart right here showing that top transactions in, in staked ETH in the last week. Clearly, Three Arrows is um, you know much higher than Celsius over here. You can see that you can compare. And so let's let's take a look at Three Arrows Capital and and you know what's going on there because they're also facing. A liquidation and they're facing a possible insolvency similar to celsius now um three arrows is a massive crypto venture capital outfit uh it's you know wall street money for the most part they've borrowed a whole lot of money um and they, they owe a whole lot of money right and they're the, the the fall basically it's the same story as what's going on with celsius is that their collateral is coming under pressure because of all of this, all of the crypto, the crypto winter we're in the bear market, right? Mm -hmm. And they they were recently hit with a margin call. And if you don't know what a margin call is, that's when you borrow money to basically take take uh, positions, uh, high, usually leverage. You're usually you're getting you're taking you're borrowing an amount of money and then leveraging it across a certain number of positions. And if those positions move against you. And you start incurring losses. What usually your lender will say, "Hey, I need you to deposit some additional amount of money to shore up the loan that we've made to you." And the reason is, is because there's a certain uh, ratio between the value of the loan and the value of your positions. And if your positions fall within a certain uh, percentage of the loan, it starts to become a more the, the position the the amount you're you're going out on the amount you're levered goes up and so if there's a, a certain fixed leverage uh ratio then then you have to deposit more money in order to get back into that to that into those bounds of what's a like whether it's 20 to 1 or 25 to 1 or 30 or whatever the the margin whatever the ratio of your leverage to capital is you have to kind of get back into that agreement right because this isn't a loan this is a loan right so they have to come up with some money they have to deposit it and cover that margin call 
And in doing so, they have to raise cash. And the way you do that is you sell at, you know, you sell some positions, sell some assets. So Three Arrows is selling off a lot of their stake ETH. And this is putting, this is putting more pressure on, on those markets because there's only so much liquidity to access. And when people, so the more people that rush for the exits, right? There's, there's a finite number of buyers on the other side. And so obviously how, what, how do you, how do you, um, how do you ration that? Well, you prices come down to on those assets to reflect the, the fact that they're not as in demand at right now. In fact, people are trying to get rid of them, you know? Right. So there's, and especially in moments of crisis, when, you know, you, you're looking at a restructuring, you're looking at potential bankruptcy, you know, it, in those moments, um, you have to get rid of these assets. So it's a bit of a, it's like a must, must do. And so others will, will give you, you know, you're not going to get full face value. Do you see a little irony that three arrows capital is taking a haircut to pay back Ave loans. <laughs> so I just say it's funny because yes. Ave is a decentralized lending platform that you know you could anyone can put up collateral on the blockchain and use that collateral to to um, to acquire more digital assets. And but when the prices go down, obviously you get liquidated or you have to put up uh, more collateral. So Three Arrows Capital is a large institutional oh, it's a hedge fund that's having to stay solvent through the blockchain crypto mechanisms. So it's forcing right. a bit of a sell-off. That's pretty funny. They, uh, so it looks like Three Arrows had a rather large uh, staked ETH position on Aave. And so they're, they're withdrawing that position and now they're going to have to return the ETH that they, that they, that they borrowed. And feel free to tip us. If you're a whale, feel free to tip us, by the way, for this alfalfa information. This right yep. now, talk about opportunity. It's like right now, an opportunity to pick up Ethereum at a discount. At, at, right. at, the, mo at the moment, because of this mechanism, Ethereum is available at, at a discount if you're willing to sit on it for, for a little while. 6%. So, not bad. And then also the yield whatever yield that you're earning on that, on that, over that time period as well. That's you know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, very cool. Don't forget uh, where you heard it first. If you, <laughs> if you heard it at all. <laughs> and we were talking, you know, before we made this video, before we started recording that there seems to be a obvious parallel between this and another moment in history. Right. We, and we like to talk about these parallels, right? When, when, when Luna Terra was happening, we, we saw clearly that this was very similar to what uh, George Soros did when he broke the Bank of England's peg, the pound oh. was pegged uh, during the beginning of the Eurozone. There was a, a, a peg that had to be uh, maintained between the, the, the pound and the, the German, uh, German uh, mark, I believe. And that was seen to be uh, an impossible to maintain because of the, the British pound's tokenomics, to use a crypto term. So, people george soros saw this knew this knew the peg was going to be broken and so he he shorted the pound and and actually was the was the uh he was the driving force that kind of you know made that happen and he i guess you could say he was like the uh the black rock in that situation right well if we have a video we have, we have a video that goes into the detail of that and we can link that we'll link that below we will we'll put it in the description um but you're right we like to go into the the parallels because the reality is there's nothing new under the sun and the sky is not falling and understand the mechanisms at bay and it's comforting and really knowledge is power. So hopefully you learned something from this. Hit the subscribe notification bell. If you like this kind of stuff, we are going to uh, follow up with before we, we wrap this up, we're going to talk a little bit about the traditional market crisis bubbles and how you can see it playing out in the moment today as asset, asset bubbles in general but yep so yeah i don't know if our viewers are familiar with this this was a um, period in the 90s in the mid 90s that it's known as the asian financial crisis um there's um essentially what happened was in the west there was an ex extension of credit uh, you know money printing credit creation money creation drove down interest rates uh, in, the, in the West, right? So this money, as, as money does, it goes looking for the best yield. And at, in the time, at the time, there was some yields over in, the, in these Asian tiger economies, 
talking about like South Korea, Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Malaysia, there was, there was some growth potential there. And so a lot of this money flew cross borders, went into these economies. And while it was there, it bit up, you know, a lot of uh, growth was occurring, right? There was, these were um, relatively undeveloped economies. So there was a lot of uh, investments that seemed to be worthwhile and would pay great, great dividends. So a lot of money flew, flew over there. And, and then there was a moment where the Fed decided to hike, start hiking interest rates, the, uh, just like we are now. And this reduces the amount of money that, this essentially reduces the amount of money in circulation, but it also changes the interest rate um, arbitrage opportunities. So before where, where the a a interest rates were real low in the West and they were higher in the East, when, when the Fed starts to raising rates, then the domestic opportunities in the West to make money go up. And obviously it's less risky, you know, all things equal to invest in more developed economies. Mm -hmm. So as interest rates in the United States and in the West went up, the, the money that flew, that was uh, flown over and, and uh, went into the Asian economy started to come, started to come back into the West. So it was definitely a boom bust kind of deal. And, and what are we seeing happening right now? with the Fed raising interest rates and flights to safety. Flights to quality and safety. Flights to yeah. quality and safety. So well, that's another reason why we bring this up. Recognize that we're talking about some historic rate hikes are happening right now with the Fed. And we're coming off a period of a massive bubble, a massive hyperinflationary period. Yes. So um, understand that's a, a lot of this this liquidity drying up and flying away from more risky, but seemingly more higher interest rate lucrative plays. Right. Well, that, that's exactly what's happening in blockchain and crypto. Consider it to be like one of the, the tiger economies where, where a lot of funds were flowing into. Yeah. But, but now, um, do you think the IMF, like they bailed out um, the, the, the Asian, the Asian economies. economies? Yeah. Do you think that the IMF is going to come in and bail out the crypto economies? Not likely, <laughs> but so, eventually we'll see what, what we'll continue to follow on the the white swan, the black swan of, of good, good news or when the markets do turn, because that's why we continue to follow up on blockchain and crypto. At the end of the day, we don't promote or talk about trading at all. This is this is why. But if you look for long term macro value and you take that long term perspective, blockchain and crypto like this opportunity with state ETH. Right now, if you're long uh, ETH, you're able to scoop this crisis up and it, and it gives you a discount on ETH right now. This is a pretty big play. Um, right. At the end of the day, blockchain in general, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Avalanche, Secret Network, um, we'll talk about many others, NFT technology, um, DeFi, it's the beginning, it's the early days. So with a long, long-term approach, this, these are very early young markets and there are some incredible opportunities yet very yeah, credible. Yeah. There are very credible opportunities when you do your own research and you rely on a yep. little bit of the research and you share that love with the uh, other resources. But at but at the same time, just like the ICO bubble days or the boom days, just like the dot-com boom days, there will be projects that, that don't come back, right? right? That don't return. So it's not, to say that you know just to, it, it's important to know what you're doing what you're buying do your research and yep. to pick out the projects that are building real value for people and not just um riding a hype wave right as one of our favorite mentors said uh don't confuse a bull market for brains yes that's yeah. right so this is the great time to learn and see what is going to be around and add value this is the this is really one of the best times in the market to sift the quality from, like you said, the hype. I think we did a pretty good job covering Celsius, yeah. Celsius, what's happening there, and the Three Arrows capital debacle and its connection to macro. Uh, we'll obviously follow up the Fed and what they announce today, although by the time we post the video, it might have been yesterday, or, but yes. we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, macro, crypto, news, education, opportunities, you know where to go. Until the next time, have a beautiful day. Namaste, y'all.